Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue talking about the Apex automations. We are going to explore the inbuilt logging mechanism, the error handling, and the new Apex automation package. If you have questions about what is an Apex automation, please take a look to the last video I uploaded to my channel, where I explain what is this new feature and how we can use it to automate the execution of a repetitive task. Without saying more, let's take a look to the logging mechanism. The last time we created an automation, which take a look to all the orders which are due to expire the next day and assigned an employee. So we are going to play a bit with that automation. We need to go to the shared components and go to automation in application logic. And this is our automation. The inbuilt logging mechanism is under the automations. If we go to execution, we were here, and we go to execution log, it will save messages. Let's say in the success, when which was the last time this automation was executed, and different information about the execution. We can alter that information, we can add more context using the Apex automation package and we are going to take a look to that. We need to go to the actions. Remember that when we are executing an automation either if this is the result of a query or always we need to define an action which is the piece of code which is going to be executed. In this case, is this is in a simple update. This action, because this is based on a query, is going to be executed for each row. So we have these calls here to these different procedures. Each of them, the main difference is more about the. If we go to the execution log, and click to messages the message type. This is the main the main difference on these procedures. If we take a look to log info, this, this one is equal to information, warning and error, which is this, and the other, which is error handling. This one is the message that the automation always is going to log doesn't matter, this is empty. This here gives you the option to format, let's say, the, the error. But if not, if you don't add that, in this case, I added like this test error handling text. But if we don't do that, uh, probably it will only log this. But if, if this is empty, it doesn't matter. So when we put this information here, we can probably um, add more context, like saying this employee already has two, two orders assigned to him, but this is not like accessible to the, to the end user, it's more for your information, for the developer information of the application that can take a look and see what's happening if something is, is wrong with the logic and everything. So it's nice to have to be able to log the warnings on errors. You can see here the three different um, packages and everything. They only take a one argument, which is a string. Now, let's take a look to the error handling mechanism. If we go here, we, as I said, this is not necessary, but this is the message that we are going to save in the logs. We have two attributes to modify the behavior 
of the error handling in our automation is this one and let me go here and this one action error handling they behave different but they are connected let's take a look to this small Let me take a look here to this diagram that I created. We have two options for the automations. With one of them is here in the execution in the actions initiated on. It could be based on a query or a function body returning a boolean as you, said, you can see here and always when it's return when this is based on a query every action is going to be executed on the context of a row so in this case is the apex engine is going to bind all the columns as bind variables and they are going to be able they are going to be available for you use in your actions so when we are on the actions like here you can see that I have access to the ID bind variable so this code is going to be executed every time for every row if we set this to a stop execution on error what is going to happen if if I have more of one action because I could add more actions here and this is like this and I get this error which is raise no data found action 2 won't be executed it will stop the execution of the row and let's say it will trigger an error which is going to be catch for this attribute. This one is going to decide what to do. If this is set to ignore, it will, it will not care and it will try to execute the next row. It will try to execute the next actions. But still, if we get an error in action one, it will stop the execution of all the actions. If we go to here and remove this, this will this means if we get an error like this and we have another action, it will always execute the other action. It won't turn an error to this context, so it means it will always an independent. Of what you have here it will always try to execute the next row of course if there is one in the query because no error was triggered and it will apply the same for each action if we set here to a stop execution and we have a bot automation that means that if we get an error on this action it won't execute this this set of action let's say is going to trigger an error and this attribute will dictate what is going to happen with the automation if we set this to a bot it will abort the execution of the whole automation we won't execute the next row anymore so it's going to be halted and but the next time the schedule arrives let's say uh, in on my case 11 p.m. at night it will try to execute it again but if we set this to disable automation it will abort the execution plus it will disable the automation we have other possible case which is having an automation with the attribute actions initiated on always that it means that it won't use the query process that we saw that apex is going to bind for each row 
the columns that we selected and this is going to execute the action for each row. In the case of always, you are going to execute the actions only one time. When we have this kind of automations, the, the error handling is a big difference. It's simpler. If we go to the action and we set this to not a stop on execution, that means it will run we will get a success message but still we are going to get the error so if we go to the log messages you're going to get something like execution options you're going to get something like this it's a bit misleading but you're still going to get this as i said doesn't matter you don't have anything here you're still going to get the message the error but because i said not non-stop on execution this, this didn't trigger an error but if we set this and apply the changes now we can actually control what's going to happen this one now both of them behaves the same because there is no difference doesn't matter the a button a, on an error because there is only one set of of batch of all the actions it's only going to be executed one time so of course you are going to abort on automation abort on error and still if you click no you're going to get the error and nothing that's everything the only one that it makes more sense let's say if you want to handle different is the disable automation which is going to disable the automation and error. But if you only want to log the the error as a failure, you should set the um, stop on execution that we saw. And in the last page, click either ignore or abort automation. They will behave the same. And we're going to get here. If we go to execution, let me save. I didn't want to do that. We are here. Let's execute this. And we go to here. And we see that now nothing changed. We still were raising the same error, but it marked the execution as a failure because we enabled the stop error on execution. In that recent error that triggered an error and um, because we click we set the attribute to ignore or abort automation I don't quite remember this one it marked the execution as, as an error another bit of information that we could get about the automation when we are in the shared components is the history. In this place we can take a look of who did a change, who deleted an automation, who changed it, when this happened, and it's pretty useful information. When we go to the new Apex package we can see a bundle of and the new procedures and functions that are pretty useful to interact and manage the new apex automations when we, when you set an automation to be well let's say this one this automation is now enabled but if you want to execute it you still can do it using the package execute which is this one and that will be executed on demand I hope this information was useful for you if you have any ideas or a subject that you would like me to talk about please let me know in the comment section and I will take a look see you in my next video